Hey friends and welcome back to Stronger Every Day. So today we are going to jump in and do a quick verse. Um, this is going to be in our series on the mind and I do have a playlist I can link above and then in the description box. I think so far it's a four part series on there. The mind is so incredibly important um, for any Christian but especially um, when, you, when you struggle with mental illness as I do. So let me read this first and then we'll kind of jump into it. Again, it's Colossians 3, 1 through 5. Therefore, if you've been raised with Christ, go to the new life sharing in his resurrection from the dead. Keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above, heavenly things, not on the things that are of the earth. For you died to this world and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body, which is sensual, self-centered instincts, immoral, impurity, sinful, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it, it replaces the devotion to God. So I love this verse in helping us understand that we have to stay focused on God. If when you when you look at it with a rational mind, when you're not when you're not in the pits of of depression and anxiety, you understand that God's going to work it out one way or the other. It might not be the exact way that we would have worked it out, but it was the it's the exact way he needed it to work out, right? So worrying and spending all this time trying to think of things of this world is not going to help you at all and it's only going to make things harder on us when we allow our minds so a situation happens and we um we go at it from every possible outcome and angle and then we have that on repeat i know nick and i'll be in a conversation and i'll, I'll say something that happened a month ago like just mid conversation and he's and he'll say are you you talking about the conversation from like a month ago because he's already processed that and moved on but my mind is still allowing it to repeat and that is the devil we've got to get to a point where first off we we in a in a godly way we take care of ourselves and we love ourselves and we understand that god loves us. He loves us through the good. He loves us through the bad. He loves us when we're sinking in the pits of depression and he loves us when we're on the mountaintop. He loves us. That doesn't change. His love for us never changes. It's not based on a checklist of good and bad behavior, right? When you're doing something wrong, he's going to nudge you. The Holy Spirit's in you and it's going to kind of nudge you to let you know, hey, this is not the right thing to do and you need to kind of readjust. But God's love for us is just full of just compassion. It's a love that we will not understand here on this earth because there's nothing to compare it to. Um, we're constantly let down by friends and family and strangers and the public and just situations that happen, um, you know, terrifying situations, uh, shootings, bombings. Obviously, you know, if you think back to 9-11, just all of the different things that have happened there's things that just get in your mind and then you just you go on repeat and those things are tragedies and we do the best we can to respond to them and prepare to, to help it not happen again what happens when you're when you're having depression and anxiety is any situation that's not necessarily rainbows and sunshine you start like a, a, a combat plan in your mind and you're trying to figure out, you know, all angles of attack and how you're going to respond. And while that's good in a war situation and it is a battle, right, over your mind, what happens when you're depressed is you can't stop that cycle. So it's, it's, it's a constant repeat and it's all that's on your mind for months, weeks, years on end. And that's been a, a huge struggle for me living with depression and anxiety is that any situation that happens any obviously not something as, as major as that but any situation that happens 
you know, if our car were to break down, my mind is attacking that situation from every different angle. And it's because I feel like there's a lack of faith for me there that God's going to handle it one way or the other. It might not be the way I want it to happen. Obviously, I would love to just float through life and not have any problems, right? But that's not how it is. So having the mind of Christ, it's a mindset for us. It's not a feeling. Our feelings are so fickle, right? We can be angry and upset with somebody one day and the next day they're our best friend again, right? Feelings are just fickle. They're, they're, they're beneficial to have feelings. Like you don't want to just not have compassion and empathy and love. And sometimes there's a place for, um, all, all of, the different emotions, but it's how you react to that, right? It's trying to stay as Christ-like as possible, using Him as our example. I know um, our pastor was talking about this past week, he's been doing a series, and he was talking about um, basically being the salt. And, and what that means is, I'm not going to jump into that, but what that means is, is being the light, basically, for comparative terms. Go out and be the hands and feet of God. You know, you're not just coming to a church to sit in a service and then act however you want when you leave um, and never try to reach and help people. And I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of Christians get called hypocrites. Um, Christians are not perfect, friends. We're not. We make mistakes. The only person that you should look to as your example is God. There are some wonderful people here on earth that are just filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with God. They have an amazing relationship with Him. They study, they devote time to Him every day. When you see them, you just feel better in their presence. They just put such a light. They're the salt, right? Those people are going to make mistakes too, right? You can't look at somebody as, well, that's my example of God. Those people are nowhere near the example that God is for us. And so our focus needs to stay on him. The devil loves that, right? When you're when you're kind of watching someone and then they don't react the way that you deem they should react or that you feel is not Christian enough and then, oh, well, I knew that God stuff was not for real. They're human, right? They're going to make mistakes. I'm going to talk about in a, another video just what a hypocrite I have been um, in a situation that's happened over the past couple weeks and um, having to dig myself out of that hole that I allowed myself to get in and I did not respond the way I should. So looking back at this verse, keeping your mind, keep set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, heavenly things, not on the things of this earth. How do you do that? You get up every day, and even if you don't have time to pull out your Bible and study that day, get up every morning and say, good morning, Lord, I love you. What can I do for you today? Listen to his word on the way to work or on the way home. If you don't have time to pull out your Bible and do an hour or a two-hour or a 30-minute Bible study, listen to his word. There's plenty of different options. There's plenty of preachings you can listen to. Nothing replaces the time in your Bible with the Lord, but there's ways to get the word into you every single day. It's interesting to me that we seem to make appointments for everything, right? Our lives are just jam-packed, nonstop. We're just, we're pushing through everything. Everything has an appointment. Everything has a space. We're, we're too busy, you know, run through the drive through run through everything's fast but instant we want everything instant but the most important thing that we don't seem to find time for is spending time with the lord and i can tell you that i can tell a difference in me when i take time and spend time with the lord my attitude and the way i handle things versus the days that i don't and i feel like People have gotten very legalistic and this is what you need to do to spend time with the Lord. Friends, that is between you and the Lord. If it's five minutes or five hours, that is between you and the Lord. Don't let someone put you in condemnation about how much time you do. You do what you need to do, but I guarantee you just spending some time with the Lord gets your mind already focused on the things above. 
before your feet even hit the floor. I always say, you know, I'm, I'm doing so good and then I'll leave the house, you know, and then something happens and then something happens on that and something happens. And so it's, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's a battle to keep my mind focused on God because when I see the things that happen, my want is to grow into a Christian that says, okay, so th this happened, okay. And then automatically default, Lord, what's your will here? What do you want me to do? Is it to speak or keep my mouth closed? Is it to fight or to step back? Is it to show support or to rally the troops? You know, what is your will and let my flesh die and that's what i'm going to talk about in the other video is i did not do a good job of that so um it's listening to that still small voice in your in your soul in your heart in your mind that says here's what i want you to do and let me give you an example of that i had posted a post on facebook um in a, in relation to several different things in my life at the moment and it wasn't um wasn't a mean post it wasn't um matter of fact i can just read it to you because it was a it was something that i had copy pasted um it says an evil man will burn his his own nation to the ground to rule over the ashes and that situation for me was kind of thinking about three excuse me three specific i think it situations that are going on right now in 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 and around um my life and i had posted it and then about 40 minutes later i felt the lord saying take that take that off and so i got on facebook and i had i saw you know a lot of people had had liked and hearted and you know yes 100 percent whatever um and my my inclination was to say I think I'll leave it and so I actually put my phone down and then I heard the Lord again say take that down so immediately I got on my phone and took it down but it took him telling me twice and um, it should have been the first time what I never want to happen is for me to stop being able to hear that voice we had a friend that we think the world of and um going through some some difficult times uh, a lot of, of people are going through difficult times right now and we kind of figured out a way that would that would help um it was a situation where uh, something needed to happen financially for them to to relieve a little bit of stress and so we, we found out the name of, of someone that we could reach out to to help with that. And I'm trying to be very vague. And so, because both uh, both Nick and I at the same time heard God say, I want you to handle this. Um, and and it, it's not always super convenient when God tells you something. Because we reached out and we handled that bill. And we actually, the next day, I got to looking at our checking account and we were going to be short that month uh, or that week until, until we got paid again. And so we actually had to go take a little bit of money out of savings just to, to get by till, you know, till the next time. Because we, you know, before this incident had happened, we had, you know, a lot of stuff going on in our homestead. And so, you know, I don't. I tr we try to stay out of debt and um, we had charged some stuff to Lowe's to get the 5% discount and then paid it off directly and I wasn't expecting this other thing to come up but it was listening to God and, and like I said it's not always super convenient because we technically in our checking did not have the money to cover we had we had enough to cover but not to finish the rest of our week out and so here's the thing two and a half three years ago three years ago i guess we had zero and we don't have a lot 
in savings, but we had zero savings. We had zero in checking. Like our bills on paper versus what we had coming in, we were short every single month and and God provided every single month. We've been in the shoes where this person is and you feel like the world is on your shoulders and there's no one to help, there's no one to turn to. And so it's listening to God's voice. It's focusing on Him, being His hands and feet and helping others when you can. And it might not be money related. For us, a lot of the time, it isn't. We um, try to do other things. Like if I can give people, we planted a huge garden this year, first garden ever. Didn't expect anything to come of it and just surplus of, of fruits and veggies. And so we've given out a ton and I, and I have had a couple of people say, why don't you sell them? And we may in the long run, if we get bigger and bigger, as far as the garden space, we may. But the reason that we planted a lot is A, I didn't think that was gonna happen. There was gonna get that many. I said I would be tickled if I got a tomato or a pepper and I probably had at least 120 pounds of tomatoes this year. It's the joy of giving it to someone that food prices are astronomical and we have the land to grow some of this food. So it's, been, it's being able to bless our friends and our family with different fruits and vegetables um you can't i can't charge that there's not a price to pay just to see somebody like you're you're giving this to us like thank you and it's not like i'm giving one tomato or one pepper i'm giving tons of tomatoes and tons of different kinds of peppers and tons of different kinds of zucchinis and um, cucumbers and just things that we're growing you can't put a price on that. It's listening to that still small voice, but I never would have heard that voice had I not been focused on the Lord. And I've really started diving deep again. I got into a place where, you know, we were, we were busy, right? We had tons of things going on here on our homestead. We had tons of things going on in our, um, agents that we volunteer for, tons of things going on in our personal life. We have, right now, we have an aunt and an uncle in the hospital. I mean, it's just, it's a lot. It was a lot going on. And so I kind of justified, well, I'm not going to study this book in the morning, right? I'll do it this evening. Well, by the evening, I was exhausted. And so there was some time where, yes, I prayed multiple times a day, but I wasn't diving deep into God's word and I felt the difference. There was a, there was a period where we were so busy that the home cooked meals started falling off and the, the diet drinks started creeping back in on a more regular level, less water, more diet drinks, more fast food, more restaurants, more, I was exhausted. I've, I've spoke before. I love watching freezer meal, um, freezer, freezer meal prep on YouTube, but our freezer is a standard fridge freezer and it's like a small fridge freezer. Right now it's full of, of tomatoes and zucchinis and cucumbers and bell peppers and all of that. There's no space in there for, let me make 30 freezer meals. I think that's amazing that you can do that, but that doesn't work here on this homestead. Now leftovers we can do, but there, I just, I didn't want to cook. I was tired. Um, I wasn't spending as much time in the word. So I, my attitude was getting different and just all the things that happen when you're not spending time with God. So I, I love that verse. I love that it's just telling us to spend our time with God. And it's, it's setting your mind, right? Setting your mind and keeping it set on the Lord. And if you have depression and anxiety, you understand that's a battle. It is a battle to set your mind and keep it set on the Lord. One thing that's helped me tremendously in keeping my mind set on God is praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. I can get in my car and I can turn on any certain station and it's probably not going to be a godly um, music that I'm listening to or I can tune in to like um, Way FM. You can it's an app you can if you have the station you can listen to it we have one that tunes in semi well in the area i live in and pretty good in, in the area about 20 miles north of us but if you can download it as an app 
Um, it's a Christian radio station and um, you can listen to that. You can pull YouTube and a lot of times once it picks up your what you like, it'll just have like a playlist of all the songs that you like. It takes some time, but you can kind of get that. That's what I listen to when I'm mowing the grass is I listen to the music on YouTube. You do have to skip ads, but it is what it is. But just getting in that mindset, praise and prayer, praise and prayer, praise and prayer. And when something happens that's trying to divert my attention and divert my mind, it's setting it back on the Lord. And that's really difficult when you struggle with depression and anxiety. It's doable, but it, you're having to, for me, I'm having to reteach my brain and my mind from years of just letting any thought and every thought come, not only come into my mind, but then stay on repeat for months. And it's focusing, it's, it's intentional. It's when a, a thought that's not related comes in, it's changing that thought. It is so tempting with so many different situations to get into the you know, let me call her and see if she heard what this happened. Let me call him and see if he knew that this happened. Let me call them and see. Then you've got 15 different people and it's it's becoming more about information and it's, it's coming into the gossip thing of it. And just to be very honest, I fell right in it a couple weeks ago. Um, just the situation that kind of happened. But it's it's praise and prayer. Keep Spend time with the Lord and keep your mind focused on Him. When the devil puts those thoughts, this is never going to get any better. You're worthless. Nobody cares about you. It would be best if you just weren't here. You're draining all of your friends and all of your family. They're tired of having to deal with you. Friends, you are loved, right? And if not one single human on this earth loves you, God loves you you he loves you when you're down he loves you when you're up he loves you anywhere you are he will come and meet you and um, my situation has been extreme as far as mental health issues and i can tell you that after years of the devil putting that crap in my head that it would be best if you would just go ahead and end your life be best for everybody you're you're draining your family you're draining your friends you're draining your husband you're draining your community um you're taking up valuable space wasting air you know you're worthless you're pathetic you're nothing um you're stupid you're fat your teeth aren't straight you you don't fix your hair every day you know you're not good you're not a, you're not a perfect gardener you're not a perfect homesteader you're not a good cook all of the crap that he's put in my head over the years i can tell you this the relationships that i have that i cherish have not left me um if you have two or three one is great two or three people in your life that never leave your side those are the ones you need to focus on. People are gonna come and go in your life. Sometimes those people are just in our life for just that season. I've had some really good friends that I still think about all the time. We've just grown apart for whatever reason. And sometimes that's God putting that distance there because you're moving on from that. It doesn't mean that's a bad person. It just means he's taking you somewhere else. And so he's putting you in a different situation. So keep that in mind um i know that it's extremely difficult to keep your mind focused on the lord i get that believe me i struggle with this all the time you can get better at it and i believe with every ounce in me that god is going to heal us and get our minds where our our thoughts are on him when situations happen yes we respond to them but we respond to them in in a, a better way in a godly way and it's going to take time it's not going to change you can't behave a certain way for 50 years and think that day two you're going to have it conquered now god can but you can't <laughs> god can right um he's not giving me that he's he's um teaching me on a daily basis to to change things and it's been really interesting to to fight off the bad and put positive in and i've told you before there's times that the only thing i can say is just repeat jesus over and over again because i'm just exhausted trying to to put the junk out and the good in so 
I hope this helps. Check out that verse and read it. See what it speaks to you. Um, again, just God's instruction, right, for our, for our mind, keeping it focused on Him. And I fully understand that that's difficult. Um, I think it's difficult for anyone, but I think it's especially difficult when you struggle with mental illness because your mind is just different than others. But we still, God still has grace to give us that that mind that we're so seeking where we can just handle things better and all of the negative crap just gets out of our brain. And I fully believe that God can restore me. I fully believe that he can restore you. What does the timetable, friends? This is year 28 that I've been dealing with depression and anxiety. 28 years. And um, I'm on the I'm on a good swing up. It's been about a year since I've been in the depths and pits. I've been close a couple times, but but following the advice that I'm given, sticking to the word, um, spending time in church, readjusting who I allow to have access to my my mind. We've talked about that too, and we'll touch on that in a separate video. But just Read that verse and see what it speaks to you. I end every video this this way. It's my, my hope, my prayer, my heart that you feel this. If no one has said this to you, that you understand and believe. God loves you. I love you. Your family loves you. Your friends love you. And we need you here. We'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.